Right, folks, and we're back in the black book now. We've got two out of the three items we need for the Chainsaw Girl. Let's go. See here, you can change your companions, but we have to take old Igor. Oh, there's a new song. Uh, what's this? Book Merchant. You have goosebumps, a sign of a devilish presence. You look around. Your only companion is humming among the silence. Suddenly, a dark figure steps out from the shade. It is a scribe, a Zagavr dealer. The wisdom that lies upon dark pages is not that of madness. You cannot paint me as a liar. You can resell our skills. You could buy a Zagavr. Um. His stuff is relatively expensive, though. Okay. Atkin Forest. A small forest sitting near the road from Virgot. Prianteg. Let's go. You catch a whiff of the disgustingly sweet smell of rot. Cold fear enters your soul when you guess what might be the source of the smell. A human body lies nestled in the grass. It is already unrecognizable from decay. You see an old wooden cross upon its breast. Buried the body. You dig a small grave and push the dead man inside. You read a prayer and continue your journey. Plus one, well, minus one to our, to our sin, which is good. Okay. Poskekliff Ravine. Peasants spotted a great whirlwind in this ravine a few decades ago and asked me to check it out. All of a sudden, the tops of the trees rattle and clang. Alarmed, birds fly away, screaming in fear. You see a whirlwind filled with loose branches and dust from the road, headed your way. Get help. Let's try dead eagle. Your mentor removes a knife from his shirt and throws it at the whirlwind. It dissolves into a throng of enraged demons. They don't like iron. Okay. So what is he doing? Summoning more evil spirits. Okay. He's hitting us for free. He's putting curse on Creases damage in words for four. Okay. You decrease his stuff. Punch him. And all we've got is stuff to boost up. Nah, this isn't great. Oh well. Alas. Lots of defense cards early on, not what I wanted. That's bad. Okay. That's really bad. Because they're going to be punching us for a lot of damage. Okay. Um, there's not a lot I can do to block a lot of this damage. So it's some of it's going to get through, unfortunately. I just have to try and kill these guys as quickly as possible. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, okay. That's killing him outright. That here. And we'll do this. I don't have anything that blocks damage. Gonna have to use one of those. I mean, I should have done that. I already had that card in play. If that's the case, I don't need it. I can use this. We should do enough. So I'm pummeling him, these two, for eight. 
13, that's going to kill him. So we need for him to basically smack him. Okay, take him out of the equation. Take a little bit of damage. Okay. Hold the door. Don't fail me now. Get a lockdown. Heal ourselves up. Reduce his damage down. Because he's a debuffer as a party member. Okay. Now we can get to work. And we can absolutely obliterate him. Okay, nothing that I want. Lots of Rupals and experience. Excellent. Salmon marshes. People rarely visited rents into these marshes since they are not really inhabited by anyone. Various spirits have made their, their dwellings. You see a small demon sitting on a hillock. In his hand, he is holding a snake by its tail, swinging it from side to side. A swishing sound of the snake's body and its angry hissing fill the swamp area. You start reading your Zagavars. The demon immediately forgets its toy and jumps straight in your direction. At least the snake manages to escape. Okay, okay. Low level demon, that's fine. We'll neutralize him. And let's throw some basic stuff down. Nice solid hit. He's going to be underpowered now. Like I said, we are getting to the end of the first chapter, and it may seem easy, but the thing is, the enemies very quickly ramp up in this game, and they have a lot of abilities to start deploying. So, this is more like you had to think of like this part of the game as introducing us to the base mechanics and more mechanics being added with each progressive chapter. Yeah, and he's dead this turn. Okay, yeah. A little bit of experience, a little bit of root pulls. On to Uster Ulkar village. Despite the late hour, sounds of celebration are coming from the village. It turns out that a festive dinner has dragged on and turned into a non-stop festival. You notice the worried host, who looks like he can't wait to say goodbye to his guests. Offer to help. You offer to disperse the festival for the host. His distrust of you vanishes when, after a couple of your Zagavars, furious winds send the suddenly worried guests scurrying home. The host rewards you with some of the dishes from a banquet table. There we go. A couple of ruples. Old Idol. Talk is something in the old wood stands an old pagan Mer Permian idol. Bathing in the moonlight, a moss-covered idol is hidden among the tall trees. You walk closer and see a fresh towel wrapped around it. The forest around you is silent. Judean mythology. The Urals offer a peculiar blend of religion. The veiled paganism of Russian Christianity is overlaid... Um, over... Uh, sorry. Um, overlaid by the paganism of native peoples who are not always Christianized. For instance, some of the Mer and 
Udmut peoples do not adopt Christianity but kept their ancestral traditions. The Kumi people adopted the new religion but mixed in their former beliefs. Even more complex was the confluence of Nixcon's reforms with the traditions of the old believers who fled to the Urals and Siberia during the Raskol or Schism. It is simply impossible to discuss religion, the religious situation in the Urals with the single notion of a double belief. Okay, road to Petneg. Petneg. People rarely venture into these masses since they're not really inhabited by anyone. Various spirits have made it this area of their dwelling. You meet a girl walking in the direction of Penteg. In her hands, she clutches a spindle that is emanating dark power. Old Yegor smirks, another of the spinner's victims. Uh, help the girl. You call out to the peasant girl and convince her to get rid of the cursed spindle. Surprised, the girl follows your advice. That might annoy the spinner, but I need to get my sin down. Ah, encyclopedia. You freeze with horror. A dead girl is dangling from a spruce tree's gnarled branch. You can't move. This strange fruit sways back and forth with a creak in the cold wind. She died recently. Vexitsa. Vexitsa. The word for wits, Vedma, takes its root from the word Vedet, to know, to have some degree of knowledge. A Vedma is a traditionally a woman versed in knowing and performing magics. They are called Versitsa from, from Vesk. Vexa squirrel. It is a photonic distortion of the word Vesitsa. One who knows. According to Chiden mythology, mythological texts, such a woman could turn into a squirrel, allowing her to enter house through the chimney and steal unborn children from an unexpected mother. According to some texts, witches often gathered atop a mountain to celebrate by roasting children over a fire. Witches perform black magic, cast evil eyes upon people, and livestock stole milk from cows, others, and said knowledge of love spells and love potions. Love magic is akin to black magic. They could be wives of Khaldoons and drew magic from their husbands. In Chudun Uzzard, they were believed to be a, to appear as regular women and were seldom depicted as ugly hags that feature prominently in Europe. As knowers, they are able to communicate with jorts. Okay. So that's all done. Uh, go tell... The, yeah, let's go tell the people back. We could summon her spirit. Let's just go and tell the people back in the village. You summon the strength to go to Pantik and tell them about the dead body. You see the despair in the eyes of the peasants. It seems the girl was well-loved in the village. At least we got our sin down. Um... Piteng village. This is a large, rich village, centre of Piantag, Volst. There's an old church of the Iphany, and it's notorious for being haunted. There's also a new one, that of Earl the Prophet. You feel at ease as you walk down the welcoming street of this village. A calm silence surrounds you. You almost pass through the village. But the silence is broken by loud laughter and the sounds of an accordion. Vasilisa, is that you? Come on, join us! I don't have the time. Come on, your work is such a bore. Five minutes here won't kill you. All right, I have a little bit of time. You sit by a house and dissolve in a deep song. Settlements. 
Near Petterg, there's a small, small village scattered throughout the nearby forest and woods. Seems like a nice peak place to live. On the field, you hear the steady sound of digging. Coming closer, you see a peasant moving the border of a field. The man looks startled when he sees you approach. He stops and calls out to you. Is that you, Yegor? It is I, with Vasilisa. God bless. God bless. Huh. What are you looking at? I'm moving the border ditch. What of it? Why are you moving the border ditch? You moved it quite far. For good reason. The Petrov's workers cause me nothing but grief. They deceive me. Shot me in flower. Only they didn't steal in broad daylight. Have you spoken of it at the village meeting? I have. Not much good it did me. Petrov's folk silenced me right away. Huh. I'll tell you what. If you curse the demons, I'll pay you. Okay. All right. Consider them cursed. You whisper a few spells into the wind. Yeah. The evil eye will cast its gaze upon the man's enemies. But will it even do him any good? They won't be able to say a word at the next village meeting. You can be sure about that. Thank you. Finally, some luck going my way. Here is some money. You take the money and go. Yeah, I wish I hadn't done that. Man, that's a lot of sin. Oh, I hope it's not too much sin. Ravine, no soldiers of waterfalls and ravines when you travel around the region. They say further to the west, there are few mountains that surround the region. Near a small forest creek, you find a grassy meadow. Among other vegetation, you see one beautiful flower. It's blood red and bright even in the moonlight. You come closer and tie its stem with a silver thread. With a swift pull, you now have a new, valuable herb, Adam's head. You take the herb and get ready to go on your way. Yeah, that sin is high. The Spinner's Hut. There's a witch hut just outside Penteg village. The Spinner is a powerful and famous Noah, even in Volgot. Vilgot. People have heard of her. Some of the girls have gone to her for love potions. Old A Igor doesn't offer such services. Because well, love potions are black magic, we just learned that. The closer you are to the house of the spinner, the more ominous the woods get. The decaying trunks of pines and spruces tower over the path like silent guardians. Your blood runs cold every other moment. You feel that the border between worlds is very thin in this part of the forest. Let's look around. Uh, bright strings on the on the, some kind on the path. That's her thread, isn't it? She bumped into someone that had that. Okay. What's this? Alden herb, damage absorbs one. The Alden herb, I was not the one who one watered you, nor was I the one who gave birth to you. Mother Earth birthed you, and bare handed girls and free spirited women watered you. Can't go down there. Okay. There's many different skill, skulls, and charms. something, I think. Twerk herb. Witches and warlocks treasure this herb. Accuracy. Uh, articulate. Plus one orders. That's useful. 
and we got an achievement for that. Distant forest, grim, quite a grim place. It's a place like this that gives witches a bad reputation. Um, it looks like there's a skull strapped to a post, which is probably not the best thing. Let's talk to Igor. So, how do you like this Izba? Huh? Ours is quite a bit cozier, isn't it? Go speak to that skull. He's a doorman of sorts here. That's the spinner for you. Always thinking up something crazy. What do you mean, speak to the skull? I mean that it used to be a kaldun. The regular folks aren't likely to chat with it. We, knowers, are used to this sort of thing. It's something new the spinner thought up. Skulls such as these used to hang on the trees around here like effigies of sorts. This one is used as a kind of test. <laughs> it would be best if you passed the test. This woman knows me, you see, but she's not familiar with you. What's with the yarn on the paths? You see it, do you? Ordinary folk don't. The yarn binds some poor Christians to the spinner. It's a strong and dark sorcery. You had better go and speak to the doorman. What else should I know about the spinner? Hush, child. These skulls report every little detail to that witch. Keep your lips sealed. So we've got this first thing, which every night there was a sound of whirling and hammering all around her isba. Chorts themselves didn't seem didn't can't be seen by only men, but I found a secret passage in some hymn book that said that, that said you needed to look for a wedding ring to see them. One time I was walking along and I saw this witch walking in front of me, f flapping and swir swirling her hands around with, with a, a pester a pester on her back. So I looked through my ring and what I did I see the bugs and flies of all colours swarmed all over the pester and stung her and stinging her. As we were walking by a herd, the witch grabbed a bunch of bugs from the air and threw them towards the herd. The chorts flew at the cows and stung them all over, returning back to the pester they had um the pester. They had, had their fill. Let me got a new song. Don't don't you say oh winds. Yeah. And a couple of new items. Let's talk to Skull. You approach the skull hanging by the door. Suddenly, the bony head starts shaking. A burning coal that serves as an eye socket stops you in your tracks. Oh, joy and Noah, are we? Finally, some fun. My eye isn't what it used to be. Who's that old timer over there? I think I know him. Will you let me pass to see the spinner? With pleasure. But I'm ordered to test Noah. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be hanging around here in the first place. Anyway, we'll do it just like in the fairy tales. I'll give you three riddles. Solve any one of them, and I'll let you through. Solve none, or refuse to answer? I'll take one of your eyes. I'm short one, you see. I'd say that's the least of your problems. Well, are you up to it? Let's ask some questions first. Wait, answer my questions first. I have no answers. Well, are you up to it? Agree. Have it your way. Ask your riddles. Listen to the first one, girl. There is a hamlet folks back together tight. Come morning, the cock sings, yet no man stands upright. There's a hamlet, folks packed and tight. Come morning, the cock crows, yet no man stands upright. Can't be a barracks as you wake up in the barracks. Pot house, maybe. But a cemetery, you have a lot of people in the cemetery, and they don't wake up when the cock crows, because the cock crows banishes evil things. A cemetery. Proper dead men do not rise from the graves. Correct. You solved the riddle. Only dead men don't rise in the morning. Believe me, I know. 
You may pass. Or you may try to guess another. Let's try for another. Let's riddle some more. Listen to the second riddle. Lame chicks in a lawn, dry wood they haul. Wound up in a ditch, can't move an inch. Turn that refers to priests who frequently recite Voyam Otter Is Is Sinna in the name of the Father and the Son. Lame chicks sing a lawn, dry wood they haul. Wound up in a ditch, can't move an inch. Not building a house. If it's priest, let's try funeral. The priests are singing for the dead. It's a funeral procession. Correct. You guessed it. I remember those songs. You'll hear them too soon enough. You may pass. Or you may try to guess another. Let's riddle some more. Steal a quine, tale of twine. Steal a quine, tale of twine. Need and thread. Steel is twine, a tale of twine, yes. Well, that's easy. I'm here to see the spinner after all. It's a needle and a thread. Correct. You guessed it. Look at you. You should know your riddles. That makes you a powerful witch. Well, you may pass. Uh, we can riddle some more. No eyes involved, just like that, for curiosity's sake. Let's see, yeah. Let's riddle some more. Extra experience is always good. Listen to the force riddle. Walks with no legs, sleeves with no arms, mouth with no speech. Walks with no legs, sleeves with no arms, mouth with no speech. Sleeves with no arms. Mouth with no speech. Shadow? A shadow walks with no legs behind a man. Huh, right you are. I can riddle you another one. Let me crack one more. The ship broke to bits over meadows and dips, over cities and streets. No popes and no dukes can bring it anew. No money, no books. The ship fell to beats over meadows and deeps. Over cities and streets, no popes and no dukes can bring it anew. No money, no books. Truth? Truth cannot be found in cities. No, wrong. Ah. Well, I've no more riddles for now. In the darkness, you'll find some riddles you can solve with the words alone. Was it maybe stars? I don't know that one. And in the darkness, eyes will burn with a fierce flame. What are you talking about? Go to the spinner. I won't delay you any further. All right, then. I'm off to see the spinner. Whoa. Evening, Kapitalina Ivanovna. Evening to you too, Igor Yevlampievich. The voice of the spinner is quiet and smooth, like the rustling of pages in the black book. Brought you my little orphan. Mm, became an ower recently, this one. You sure did. But what are you thinking, poking around in my business? You took my spindle. It was doing my bidding, you know. I let it slide on account of you not knowing and all. God bless, Kapitalina Ivanovna. I see you're a fine girl and a smart one. Yes, I heard your replies to the riddles. To be a knower is not all demonic affairs. So why are you here? Not just to check up on an old woman, I should think. Uh, don't mention the dead girl. Uh, maybe mention the dead girl? Let's talk about the skull. We met your doorman. What of that skull? Some lousy Kuldun. 
And near it, Nick, God rest his soul. An evil sorcerer to a curse to return as a ghoul or ha and haunt the living. Hasn't served his time yet, so he helps me around the house. I saw a dead girl in Villas of Woods. That was Marfa, I would guess. Didn't have money for a love potion. Was quite desperate, I gather. Well, it serves her right. I wanted to ask you about this yarn you have here and around the house. This witcher is not yet for you, Vasilisa. In time you'll learn, perhaps. It's not the same as sending fiends for milk, mind you. I need a woven belt. A powerful one, Kapitalina Ivanovna. Yes, I know you came for a belt. Only why would I give one to you? Old Yegor warned me that I should watch my mouth around the spinner. How should I answer her? Compliment. Just, like, just, just suck up. Just You're suck up You're known all away. across the Uyest for weaving the best belts, Kapitalina Ivanovna. So I am. You aren't here without reason. I can indeed make good belts. You've become a knower, so I'll give you an enchanted belt. So what are you going to do with your chorts? How am I supposed to answer that? I really don't know what to do with them. Talk to the demons, because he doesn't like he doesn't like demons. Well, make them suffer, of course. Give them some backbreaking work. That's how you should treat them. Torment those filthy creatures. Only no worse can do some good. Well, turns out you're a good knower, girl. I'll give you a belt as a gift. Here, it's a good one. Later, I'll put you in touch with a pupil of mine. A fine man. Maybe it'll work out for the two of you, hmm? Thank you for the belt, Kapitalina Ivanovna. Well, thank you, Kapitalina. See you again sometime. See you soon. Farewell. Spinner is no simple witch. It's not the last time we'll hear of her. Well done, Vasya. She's taking a liking to you. The meeting couldn't have gone better. All right, we've got the belt. Now we must plan our next moves. Well, you've got all the items you need. Now we can try freeing your bride. Since you have the book now, I can't go. I'm not the strong of a Kaldun anymore, to tell the truth. And Abdiricha is a powerful spirit. A bath spirit that lives beneath the book. Benches of a banya can skin a human alive. She can charm and skin you alive so fast that you won't know what hit you. So, Vasya, you must prepare yourself properly. Perhaps uh, you have some questions. What kind of ritual should we perform? I don't remember you teaching me any such things. I've never saved changelings from the bunnies. I think you will need to go down beneath the floor. The bunnik will test you there. You have all the right items, but don't forget your wits. Perhaps uh, you have some questions. What is that, Abdiricha? Who knows where this one came from? These things all emerge in different ways. They say a banyak settles in a banya where 40 children were born. As for this one, the only thing we can say for sure is that she switches out children. Is it an accident or not? Only the Abdiricha can answer that. Perhaps uh, you have some questions. Let's go. Time to hit the road. Right. So. These guys are back. 
Yeah, this is what I was worried about. We failed the task. Yeah, task failed. Got a point of sin. Another task failed, another point of sin. To send you let's see which one is going to take a long time yeah we'll send you and oh, we can just let him here defense page f one less one less armor. Man, that's nasty. Well, let's go here with the fire. Our sin is going up. Encyclopedia. The board to hear cut origins. The origin of this mythological creature is most people's minds is closely associated with original sin. According to folklore, an Ordirica manifests in a new banyar if someone gives birth in it. As soon as a newborn is washed for the first time in a banyar, an Ordirica springs up. In some regions it was believed that the number of Ordiricas in a banyar corresponded to the number of newborns washed into them. In other regions people believed that the Ordirica manifests only after the 40th birth is washed. Ordirica were well were made well under the cells, benches or behind the furnace of Banyar. She is considered a harmful entity too late. Too late was is especially dangerous to little children. It was believed that small children under the age of one who will, when left alone in a Banyar, might be swapped by an Odoriska for an Aspen log. You have everything. Okay, and we've got the belt. Well, Vasha. Now I can say cannon okay. fire. Still, I think that war- You've seen too few- Perhaps that's true. I know how to get over this. I have okay. an idea. So he's got nothing new to say to us. I what still wonder how word gets out in the land of Perm. I travel to Vilgord. No one fears me like they used to anymore. Must have heard that I transferred the power to you. So why weren't you killed at the crossroads? Ha! Huh. So, the fiends circled around me. Well, I think that's it. We'll meet Timofey soon. Then, I see one demon wearing a red hat. So I grabbed it. Then, everything froze. Turns out, the hat was changed to him. The demons went round and round, glaring at me with their fiery eyes. And their leader says, return the hat, I'll do anything. He could bring back my brother, though. I asked him then, where do you come from, you accursed demons? And what do you know? Prokopi, the holy fool, sent them for me as a sort of a sacrifice. It wasn't the master of the forest who helped him, but demons all along. The children who disappeared in Vilgort were also his doing. He fed them all to his chorts. Timofey among them. Devil curse Prokopi's soul. If I ever see him in hell, even there I'll try to curse him. I'll make sure he suffers. I will. What did you do with the chorts? Send them to kill Prokopi. In the end, everyone thought he had drank one too many. But it was my chorts. That's not the end of it. But I'm tired. Next time I will tell you about the Black Book. Why would the Banya Bride need these sort of things? I reckon it's the only way she can get out of the ethereal world. She need things from the human world. You see, there's no living man without a cross, a belt, and a name. This girl never had any of that. 
Right, we have everything. No new stuff. We've got two visitors. Listen, Lysa, I have a problem. Before we go searching for the charts, can you help me with this business of mine? There is this old friend of mine. Trafim is his name. The hunter from uh, Kishkanogov Sloboda? Right. He disappeared all of a sudden. I don't know what to think after this Abjiriha business. He could have been captured by the Leshi. Vasa, will you come with me to Sloboda to help find him? No, let's agree. All right. It's not far after all. Each of your helpers have a unique task, which he will let you carry out if he trusts you enough. You have just taken on one of these tasks. By taking on a companion's task, you pause the progress in your current task and postpone all visitors until the next day. After completing your companion's task, you resume your current tasks. Right. Just a couple of hours away. Not far from Yenidor. Wait! I lived in Sloboda when I was younger. I remember I had a stash there. Take it, Vasilisa. You might need it. And we are off on the road. It's locked. We can't take anybody else. So, here we go. Panita Village. After a long walk on the old road, you see the wooden dome of the chapel, and then Pantina village itself. Tired from journeying, Nikolai walks into the first izba he sees to have a mug of kvass and to catch his breath. You grow weary. Something isn't right about this building. The gloomy hosts serve you and your companion, keeping you on the opposite side of the central beam. Judging by their faces, it seems to you that all is not right in this house. Prime beam. The interior of an ispa is divided by a main, by a mine, by a mine, not mine principle. So by a mine, not mine principle. The central beam or mattist, mattista, a log that holds the ceiling up, divided an ispa into two evenly spaced parts. It was forbidden to enter the owner's half without an invitation. Guests sat on a bench by the stove. One of the ends of the centre beam jutted up out beyond the walls of the Ispa, and a horse or roosters were carved into that end. Up until the 19th century, it was carved with several, with seven or nine springs of an axe, which was its own ritual of sorts. These carvings were called on to protect the house from evil. A rooster is a personification of death, a link to the concept of the world of the unliving ancestors and descendants. A horse or a foal perform the same protective function. It's, there's no accident that the heroic horse of the legendary Bogotia Jan Muromets was once an emaciated foal. Other, nas other nationalities placed totemic, totemic, totemic ancestry skulls on top of the house. You quickly scan the room and the inner porch. No demons are to be found, so you go outside. When you raise your head, your suspicions are confirmed. A demon sits on the roof, lazily swatting at mosquitoes. You whisper your Zagavar, and the disgruntled Chort flies away with an audible squeak. Looks like he's been sitting on this roof for quite a while. You wonder why he decided to settle here in the first place. Chances are, a Khaldun sent him here for a job, but forgot all about him. Well, at least we managed to reduce our sin. But this is a good place to end, I think, folks. I've been calling this night. This has been the Black Book. And we've got to take, down, take care of some business, and then we can go and save the little changeling girl. And I shall see you all again next time. Goodbye, everybody.